Hello. In the true spirit of not wasting anything, which I keep talking about, um, I'm aware that the last recipe we did was um, had orange zest in it in the um, sauce on the carrot cake. So I have an orange here without any zest on it and haven't eaten it. So it's just sitting here. So I thought I would make for the next um, uh, dessert a crumble. I know, crumble. It's very ordinary, but it is delicious. And there are not many people who don't like a crumble. I personally don't like apple pie, but I quite like apple crumble. I also like blackberry and apple crumble. And the one I'm doing today, which is rhubarb, ginger and orange crumble. It is delicious. The difference is going to be in case you don't do it, and probably most of you do, but just in case you don't, this is going to be a twice cooked crumble, which I think is the best way of doing it. Um, it's, I think, Raymond Blanc who introduced me to it, as you do. <laughs> I was chatting with Raymond. No, sorry. <laughs> it's a Raymond Blanc. It's his mum, I think, did it. It's always our mum, isn't it? Um, and it works really, really well. So that's what I'm going to show you today. Rhubarb, ginger and orange crumble. But it can be anything. So in my freezer, I've got blueberries, blackberries, raspberries. You can put any fruit you like at the bottom, but someone last year asked if I wanted any rhubarb and I said, oh, yes, please. And when it came, it's really big. It wasn't, I was hoping for lovely pink rhubarb that costs a fortune, um, unless you know someone with some in their garden. And it wasn't any of that, it was big, horrid rhubarb. So I just said, oh, thank you very much, chopped it up and put it in the fridge, freezer. So I'm going to get it out today and I'm going to make a crumble with it. Bob will eat crumble and custard. That's the, the word custard, which he'll eat anything if it's got custard on it. So um, that's what we're going to do today. OK, see you in a minute. Now, my orange that has been left with that grind on, it's really, really hard. So it's going to be quite difficult to deal with. I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute. But this is an orange that is just an orange out of the heat bowl and it isn't gone hard. It hasn't gone hard. So I'm going to just cut it down. Put it down like that. Let's see what we're doing. And obviously, you want to make sure you don't get any of the white pith in because it is um, bitter. So, you want to make sure you don't get any of that in. So you cut the orange up, and slice that little bit of pith off, and you want all this juice as well. So I'm going to save the juice, well, save the juice, I'm going to chip the juice out of this in a minute. I'm just going to slice that up. And then the one that's gone hard, because I meant to do it, I kept meaning to do it and I didn't. Um, I meant to uh, you know, chop it up like this and I didn't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in hot water and to boil a kettle and put it in hot water and that will soften the skin enough for me to cut it up. Take that middle out because again that's not very nice to eat. And there we have our orange in bits just to put in. And you can put your ginger in this in whatever form you care to. I've got here some ground ginger, I've got crystallized ginger and of course we have the ubiquitous jar of stem ginger which we've used in lots of recipes so far. So you can use whichever you want. I might put some of this crystallized ginger in. A, because it's been knocking around in my cupboard for quite a long time. And also it's sweet. So it will add some sugar to the mixture without me actually adding sugar, if you see what I mean. That makes sense. It will be sweet in the mixture. Excuse the banging in the background. I was just um, investigating the cupboard under the stairs to get the hoover out. Can't argue with a man who wants to get the hoover out, can you really, girls? So we won't say anything. Well, we will when he makes noises like that. <laughs> Sorry. He is grovelingly apologising. It's gone really hard oh, from being around a while. So, but it was softening in the cooking, so it's not a problem. It will soften up. And as I say, the sugar in it will make sure that it's um, adding some sweetness. But you can use the stem that we've got, which would be lovely. And you can use ground ginger, which I have here. So... There's some ingredients. I'm just going to pop this in a bowl and put um, the kettle on it. Now, my rhubarb, just to prove my point, can you see it's really big, 
curry glue bar and it's been frozen so there's lots of water coming up it which i'm going to tip off as it that's it defrosting it I should do that several times during its cooking. Sorry about the noise of the kettle. Hope you mind. There's my little mug full of hot water and an orange, and that would just soften that to mind enough. But I think for me to um, take the orange out of it. So if you haven't got an orange, with or without rind, you can just add some orange juice to your mixture. To, if you want to make it orangey, you don't have to. Uh, but it, it, it's quite nice. I think it's a really good combination. The orange goes really well with the rhubarb um, and makes it um, additionally fruity and sweet. So now this rind is soft, but very hot. And I can do exactly the same with this orange as I did with the other one. Just cut it off, just how you would if you're making a fruit salad. I hope no one is saying, but I haven't got a knife sharp enough to do that. Well, I have Victoria Knox knives, which are my very favorite. Um, I've got three. Four, in fact, for the cheese knife as well. And they're my very favourite because they're lovely, lovely and sharp. And uh, I use them all the time. I like serrated knives for fruit and veg. I think they usually work best. Um, so I tend to use these the most. <laughs> and of course, as I said to you before, if you do this, if you heat it either in a microwave or hot water, you get a lot more juice out of it. If you've got a bit of citrus fruit that's a little bit elderly, shove it in the microwave, stick it in some hot water, and it's much juicy. You can see the juice pouring out of this. And it's exactly the same orange as that one that I've just done. They came from whites on the same day. So, you know, they are exactly the same. But this one is much juicy because it's been warmed up. Oops. Now, my rhubarb is bubbling away behind me, but it is... There will be a lot of a lot of water and it will juice in it, um, which I will have to thicken, um, which you wouldn't if it was fresh, but it's just because I've used the frozen. Um, it's rhubarb's not really not the best fruit to fruit to freeze, fruit to freeze. Um, it really isn't. And I only did it because I couldn't think what on earth to do with it. Having been given it, I couldn't waste it. Um, um, and so I thought I'll just stick it in the freezer, it would come in useful. And uh, there it stayed. For well, for a year, I suppose, isn't it? it must have been nearly a year since I've had it. Um, but there you go. I think I've got it in the midst of in the midst of lockdown when we were on lockdown for a minute or two. I think that's when I got given it. I don't know when rhubarb's very very uh, uh, when there's a lot of rhubarb fruiting, I'm not really sure what, what season it is. Right, so there's my orange and my ginger. And if it's not ginger enough, I will add ground ginger to it, probably. My rhubarb is cooking away here. Um, it's not, some of it's not even defrosted, it's and softened. So I'll let that carry on cooking. And meanwhile, we're going to make our crumble. Now, you can add lots of things to crumble, lots and lots of things depending on your taste and your uh, dietary requirements. So, let me just go to here. Oh no, I don't mean that one. Oh, wrong one, wrong one. That one, that one. Uh, so the recipe is just plain flour, butter and sugar. So you can use sweetener instead of sugar if you prefer. It does need some sweetness in it. Um, and in with the plain flour, 
you can use as I'm going to, uh, porridge oats, because I think the crunch is nice. You can put nuts in it. You can add anything you want to it, but the basic, a, ba a basic crumble is flour, butter and sugar. That's all you need. I'm going to use our marvelous um, mixing up the flour and butter type machine. <laughs> and then we're going to bake it. So we're going to, first of all, we're going to start by putting the oven on. Excuse Bob wandering to and fro looking scruffy because he's in the garden. Um, we're going to put the oven on. I'm just trying to think what temperature it is and I can't remember. Oh, um, 170, gas five. So 170 fan oven. So I'm going to put my fan oven on, 170. And you want a clean baking sheet as well. So if you have those two ready and then we'll get our flour and our sugar and our butter ready. Here's my rhubarb that I've cooked. I've drained a lot of the juice out of it and I'm going to add to it the orange, all the juice and the ginger. I'm going to stir that up. Sounds lovely. Okay. I'm going to put that on one side for the time being. And moving into the spotlight, <laughs> my bowl with my sugar, butter, unsorted butter and flour. Now, my bowl has in it 100 grams of flour. And that's because I'm going to add the other 20 grams of, made up of some chopped walnuts and some porridge oats, because they'll just give it a nice little crunch. The walnuts I'm going to put in afterwards because they don't need to be baked in the oven, but the porridge oats do, so I'm going to put those on in a minute. And of course, it's just straight out to the fridge, so it's really hard. So you just rub that in as we've done before for scones and whatever, pastry and scones with your pastry blender or your fingers if you don't have a pastry blender. With your fingers. I just don't like to because I'm a lazy cook, really. Anything that makes my life easier is okay with me. Just touch it all off of here. Let you make your oven should be. Let's have you've done all this and faffed about. The oven should be ready. My oven is ready. Now, yesterday I tidied up all my baking tins, and I don't suppose for a second I can get to what I want without an enormous amount of fuss. But, you know, but the cupboard is very tidy, so you know I can't really complain. They don't all threaten to fall out. I was quite concerned that one day I'd open the cupboard and 15 baking tins of assorted sizes and weights would fall on my head, which I don't think was probably a good idea. There we are. So that's that, all done. Right, I'm, as I say, I'm going to measure into that 20 grams of porridge oats. On there. Put that on. All it has, I think. Put it to zero. Get porridge oats into their container. I've got 20 grams in. I'll give it a stir to mix those through. Now, you can find recipes where you can use, well, I mean, you can use anyway, you can use demerara sugar instead of um, caster sugar. You can use sweetener instead of sugar. Uh, sweetener. You can use soft brown sugar. But I'm just, just to show you, I always feel I ought to use the, um, the correct recipe just to show you. And then you can play with it. 
You can, of course, also put in here some ground ginger, which is just what I'm going to do. So this is gingery as well, which is rather nice. I'm going to put probably half a teaspoonful in. As you will have deduced, I really do like ginger, and I think it adds, you know, it's a sweet, warm, lovely flavour to add to really whatever you're cooking in this Ginger stirred in through there as well. Okay, so now I'm going to attempt to get my tin. So I'm going to turn you off because I think the clutter may the clutter may be more than you can bear. So hold on a moment while I just gosh, be very glad I paused you. It was very noisy. Here's my tin. I'm going to tip that out into a nice. Nice, dreadful word. I was always taught never to use that when I was at school. There are so many other words you can use, Carolyn. Never allowed to use nice. Never, ever, ever bought my mother a card, a Mother's Day or birthday card with nice on. Right. Turn that out to a layer, a single layer, and you put it in the oven. Now that needs to cook. And the reason you're doing this, in case I haven't made that clear, the reason you're doing this is because, she said changing cameras if she possibly can. Yes, the reason you're doing this is sometimes, um, oh, out. sometimes crumble can be a bit claggy. So this way the crumble is crispy before it goes on. Obviously some of it will go soft because it will be on the fruit but the majority of it will stay, will be nice and crispy. And as I say, I'm adding nuts to mine as well, which will make it even crispier. Um, so you're just going to pop that in the oven and you're going to cook it for 15 minutes until lightly colored. Keep an eye on it. It's a bit like, uh, as we've said before, roasting um, hazelnuts or anything like that, that you might roast in one minute, it's white and the next minute it's burnt to a crisp. So just keep an eye, on it, but it says 15 minutes and, um, 15 minutes is what we need to time it for. Meanwhile, you can put your fruit into the bowl that you're going to use to make your crumble. Um, sorry, sorry. Uh, yes, so you can get your dish that you're going to put your crumble in, which I'm about to do. Dish ready for my crumble mixture. And here is my rhubarb with my orange and my ginger in it. I just tasted it and it's really, really sharp. So I'm going to put some sugar in that. And I'm going to use brown sugar because again, that will give it a depth of flavour, which I think is probably what it is lacking at the moment. Um, it's lovely though. And I can taste the orange. Not going to taste the ginger, so I'm going to put some more ginger into here. In fact, what I think I'm going to do to sweeten it and to put some ginger in is put some syrup from my jar of stem ginger. How clever is that? The last time I opened the jar of ginger, I had some extra syrup from the jar before. So I'm going to tip a tablespoonful cracks of ginger in there, and I think that will add some sweetness and some ginger flavour. Oh, I can smell it. I'm so sorry for everyone, <laughs> those of you who don't like ginger. My classes must be complete nightmare. I do apologise. Now, of course, as I've said, you can be doing blackberry and apple and ginger need not come into your vocabulary at all. Um, I just love ginger. So I'm going to put that in there, ready for the crumble to go on top. Yum. There's my fruit in the bowl waiting to be covered in the crumble mixture. But as we've got to wait 15 minutes at least, we're going to switch you off so you're not too bored.
you're not there just watching my uh, workshop. Well, you are actually, but <laughs> that's not why I've done it. I'm going to get the uh, crumble out any second now when it goes king. Um, and I was just getting ready. I was just getting organised. Being an organised person. It's a beautiful sunny day which actually makes life difficult because the sun streams into the kitchen and uh, ruins the recording so I've had to have the blinds down and the lights on which is um, a bit of a shame but there you go such is life and any second now now I don't know if you can see the color of that it's actually just very pale golden brown a bit like our biscuits that we did the other day I'm going to shove the nuts into the bit. Yeah, nuts in there. Um, so I'm going to stir that up to get that incorporate. That's better. I'm going to incorporate the nuts. Let's see. There it is, just all ready. The bits at the sides are sort of cooked into a bit of a. And we're going to um, tip this over our crumble. We're going to put the, after we put the crumble, it only actually needs another sort of ten minutes or so in the oven because your fruit is cooked. Cooked fruit is and you're just going to sprinkle this on. These tins, which are lovely, are really, really heavy. They're these solid ones, but are the only ones you can buy nowadays. Good old fashioned, you know, little thin ones that I have in there as gill. I'll know more. And these are wonderful because they cook beautifully, but gosh, they do weigh a lot. Old and pathetic like me. Right, there we are, that was all on, and there it all, it's delicious, isn't it? This is going to be for our supper tonight, so we're going to have it um, reheated tonight. I'm going to pop that into the oven for 10 minutes, and as you can see, you can see the little bits of nuts in there as well, which I think will just make it deliciously crunchy. So 10 more minutes for that. And then it will be done. Well, in the time that we've been cooking that, I've managed to run some boiling water, I run some hot water and get the washing up. In the bowl, that's as far as I've got. It's in the bowl waiting for me. Uh, it's still no dishwasher, as you can gather from that. So, so pingity ping, there's a crumble. Have a look. Delicious. And there it is. And the super thing about it is it's not stuck together in gooey, it's, it's crumbly. And it's really, really delicious. So there's your crumble. And the next thing we're going to make is the custard to go with it. But that's another story. So enjoy. <laughs> 